between zero to three, those are those are, those children are not of the age where they are in school. Ultimately, we just need to be doing whatever we can to be creating a public early childhood education system, rather than dumping money into this this private mechanism. St. Louis City's Prop R would designate money for early childhood education, but some critics say where the money actually goes is a problem. It isn't about um, privatizing the dollars. It's about access for all early childhood. I'm Sarah Fenske. This is St. Louis on the Air. Hi, I'm Alex Hoyer, executive producer for St. Louis on the Air. Before today's episode, I want to take a moment to say thank you for listening and choosing this podcast. Our team works hard to provide nuance on the news that shapes your life and your community. We wouldn't be able to do this without your support. The money you give to St. Louis Public Radio helps fund this podcast. So please go to stlpr.org slash donate and give an amount that works for you. Your contribution along with that of your neighbors is what fuels St. Louis on the air. We're really grateful. And again, that website is stlpr.org slash donate. And thanks. Prop R would increase city property taxes by about $22 a year for a $200,000 house to pay for early childhood education. Now, that may sound like a no-brainer, but a related measure in St. Louis County ended up drawing some criticism, and it's not on the ballot this fall after all. Prop R is the brainchild of a local nonprofit called WePower, and we had scheduled WePower's director of policy to come on the show and talk to us about it. He had to cancel late yesterday, uh, but Jody Jordan graciously agreed to take his place. Now, Jody is the director of the William L. Clay Early Childhood Development Parenting Education Center at Harris Stowe State University. She has a doctorate in education, and she is an advocate for Yes on R, and she joins us today. So, Jody. Jody Jordan, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. So we appreciate you coming here and and sharing your excitement over Prop R. What makes you a fan of this ballot proposition? Well, I'm a fan of early childhood education. Um, I am a fan of services and resources for early childhood. What we all know is that uh, the ages of zero to five are the most crucial years for our children. If we can provide them with the services and resources at an early age, they have access then to um, greater opportunities for academic achievement. They have opportunities for access to interventions that maybe will um, be really uh, positive for them as they go on to school. So the whole idea of having students prepare for school is a great opportunity. So I'm an advocate because I'm an advocate for children, and I do believe in early childhood education. So $2.3 million a year is not a lot of money. What you're talking about, I mean, yeah, that's really important, and it sounds great. But how could you possibly even begin to do that with just another $2.3 million a year? Well, that $2.3 million a year comes in place of a a system that has not provided any support for early childhood education. Mm -hmm. So right now, this is a great opportunity because it creates a funding source uh, for early childhood education in the city where there just has not been an opportunity. With those funds, then... um, Teachers and early childhood centers and children have access to more resources. Um, there can there will be a system devi- uh, devised so that there is access to technical assistance. Um, providers will have access to recruitment and marketing uh, resources. There's opportunities for quality improvement. What we want to do is create a system where there is an opportunity for all of our centers to be considered high-quality centers, because that's also another issue. Um, we, we need to improve early childhood so that all children have access to great opportunities for learning. And so this funding begins that effort, you know, to provide better professional development, There'll be more social-emotional supports. Uh, Students can get the necessary screenings that they need. And all of this, again, uh, provides just a greater opportunity for children. And it's an opportunity that does not currently exist for all 
uh, children in the city of St. Louis. Now, my understanding of the way how all this would work is that the, these tax dollars would go to the mental health board, and they then say they're going to distribute it through this fund they have called the Children's Services Fund. So nonprofits could apply to this fund or be awarded grants through this fund, and it would help um, pay for what they do and, as you say, sort of upgrading what they do so they can do a better job of what they do. Um, but why send it through this mental health board fund? Why not just earmark it for the St. Louis public schools, which do have a, a preschool program? Well, that's a great question. So the first thing I want to speak to is the mental health board has had a long um, record of providing services for children through the um, children community children services. So they have been for decades providing, you know, this type of necessary funding for agencies that impact early childhood. So we would want it to go through that system because they have already established a great uh, reputation for how they do funding, how they release grant funding to other agencies. So it's a great way to do it. The other piece of that is that this is different from uh, any uh, system that would impact the public school system. These are early childhood funds that are dedicated primarily for children zero to five. Um, so it does not impact K through 12 education. So St. Louis Public School would not be able to uh, do that kind of, um, of, I guess, granting of funds mm -hmm. because they don't provide care for children who are zero to three, which is another major uh, issue, is that between zero to three, those, are, those, are, those children are not of the age where they are in school. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's that dissonance between uh, K-12 and then 0 to 5 um, where we need to have a system that, that benefits those younger children. And that's why this is uh, primarily for early childhood education in the city. And so when you say it's primarily for that, uh, the St. Louis Public Schools, they have started up a program that serves kids who are like 4 and 5 years old. So in those years right before they get to kindergarten, which is what they've traditionally served. Is this money specifically looking at 0 through 3 or, or it's looking for 0 through 5? It is specifically for zero to five because all children don't go to public schools. Mm -hmm. And so it benefits those providers who are not part of the school district. The school districts have their own funding. But this funding, uh, the great part of it is that it is going to provide these services and access for providers who are working for zero through five. So it, it does not impact St. Louis public school at all. It's a separate funding source. Okay. I know there have been some concerns about that, and we did talk to somebody who shares them. His name is Will Suggs. Um, he's a stay-at-home dad. He's a big supporter of St. Louis public schools. He's also the sixth ward committeeman here in the city, and he opposes Prop R. Here's what he said about that. Well, it, it comes down to a concern that we're going to be funding private education with public dollars. And I, I just don't think it's good policy to do it that way. You know, we can have a publicly funded, publicly controlled early education system, and we have that part way with SLPS's pre-K, um, but all the way down to zero to three if we invested the money the right way, and this doesn't do that. And that's Sixth Ward Committeeman Will Suggs. Now, he says he's concerned that this subsidizes programs that actually compete with the pre-K uh, that the St. Louis Public Schools have set up. And as far as he's concerned, he believes that moves things in the wrong direction. Ultimately, we just need to be doing whatever we can to be creating a public early childhood education system, one that SLPS has already been working towards, rather than dumping money into this this private mechanism that's ultimately just going to create more barriers to achieving a publicly controlled and publicly funded early childhood system, which is what we should be aiming for. And that is St. Louis dad, Will Suggs. Jody Jordan, I'd love to hear your response to that concern he raises there. Well, I, I think that, you know, uh, to his point, you know, uh, there there can be some room for discussion around the zero to three versus the uh, zero to five. But I think that, you know, we need one system that impacts early childhood education. 
with the mental health board and um, taking these tax dollars and using them, they'll make decisions about who gets this funding. And this funding uh, provides access to all providers in the city of St. Louis. And so it isn't about um, privatizing the dollars. It's about access for all early childhood. Mm-hmm. It's about um, uh, the centers that would not um, – Uh, necessarily usually have the opportunity to get the grant funds. And so what we're doing is we're increasing quality across the city for all caregivers, for anyone who needs access. And, And the things that they're able to do with this funding will have a positive impact on the children uh, in this city. And so while we, we're not arguing the point about uh, St. Louis Public, what we are saying is is that in the city, we need to make sure that we're able to deal with all children, whether they're zero to three or four to five. And SLPS does not currently have uh, any program or service that deals with children zero to three. Mm -hmm. And so at this time, what we're dealing with is what is happening right now. We need a consistent system that deals with all children zero to five, but with the goal of making sure that they are prepared, that they are ready for school, and that they have access to high-quality child care prior to attending school. One of the other questions I've heard raised uh, since this money is all going through the Mental Health Board, um, what kind of transparency are we going to have or, um, you know, how will we know that this money is actually going to those in need and not, say, just, you know, some nonprofit daycare center that's serving affluent parents? Well, I believe that there's transparency in all of the mental health boards reporting, um, and you can always check um, that reporting. It, they're, they're, they do post that information on their website. Mm-hmm. And so anyone who would question that has the access and the ability to go and check uh, how those funds are given and to whom they're given. Okay, so there are some some checks in place there, and they're used to dealing with taxpayer funds there, so they have a, a certain level of transparency they're required by law to deal with. That's correct. And if it's passed, they are dedicated to early childhood programming. And and so they will use this fund specifically for, as we have stated, early childhood education. And that's what we want to see. That is that is the value of this bill. And so, you know, we want, don't want to lose that important message. Early childhood needs these funds, and it begins an upward swing in an area that has not been impacted. This funding will help those children in the most divested areas of this system. The, this is an urgent matter, and it is important. You know, prior to the pandemic, uh, we knew that it was only 10,000 out of 34,000 children age five and under who were in licensed child care programs. So that leaves like 24,000 children without access to quality programs. So with this kind of measure, this gives access to that that. Um, number of children who still need access. We want to make sure that St. Louis City can offer that. And it also helps our caregivers who have lost money or who are in danger of closing as a result of uh, COVID-19. Uh, early childhood has had some severe losses. And so this is another way of helping those providers to stay, op- stay open and providing services for our children. Um, Jody, I know that you are not, um, uh, uh, you don't work for We Power. that you're, you're the director of the Early Childhood Center at Harris Stowe State University. That is a full-time job there, and I know it keeps you Absolutely. very busy. Um, but since we have you here to answer these questions, and, and we so appreciate you filling in um, at the last minute here, but a lot of people have asked, who is actually behind this thing? And, and this is the work of this nonprofit called We Power. Can you tell us just a little bit about who they are? Well, so it's this this whole effort is basically um, put together by a group of people, and We Power is one of them. And so, We Power is an organization, it's a community based organization that is committed to disrupting unjust systems. And the, at the core of it, We Power works to activate the community to power and helping to reimagine and re- redesign unjust systems. And so behind this measure, We Power is pushing forth um, its 
its purpose of redesigning early childhood education and ensuring that we have quality systems in place um, in, a, in a time where there are none. And so I, I really appreciate the work of We Power, and I appreciate their focus on early childhood education, but they also have arms in other areas as well. Now, one last thing I wanted to make sure to ask you about today is this was originally supposed to be part of sort of a two-prong campaign. It was going to be happening in St. Louis County. It was going to be happening in St. Louis City. And ultimately, the elected officials in St. Louis County balked and decided not to put it on the ballot the way that the Board of Aldermen did here in St. Louis City. Can you speak at all to, to the reasons for that? Uh, I can't speak totally to the reasons, but what I can tell you is that uh, this is such an important measure. And um, while we... Uh, know that we will be successful in the city, we're going to be working to reimagine and redesign the efforts in the county so that we can still push forward the, the same agenda because quality early childhood education systems are important in the county as well. And so the goal would be, you know, for uh, students zero to five, to be at the forefront of that focus and to get, you know, everyone on the same page around how that legislation will move forth. So you're not done in the county. The, the advocates who are working on this here in the city, you will be back. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, Jody Jordan, um, director of the Early Childhood Education Center at Harris Stowe State University, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. You've been such a good sport on such short notice, and, and we really appreciate that. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed speaking with you. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.